Hey there, it's Sunday, February 25th, and time for Proverbs 25. Let's jump over there and get into it. Huh? Uh, i turn off my... There we go. There we are. Let's go down a little bit. There, now we're ready. More of Solomon's Proverbs. Okay, remember we just did the 30 things. And went over them all. So, that you're supposed to memorize. Here are more of Solomon's Proverbs copied by scribes at the court of King Hezekiah of Judah. Okay, so... Actual Solomon's writings finished in the last chapter, and these are now copied by the scribes at the court of King Hezekiah of Judah. So a lot of these will be repeats. <clears throat> we honor God for what he conceals. We honor kings for what they explain. That's something different that I have heard before. I'm used to this over here in the word-for-word -word translation. It is the glory of God to conceal the matter, but the, king, the, the glory of kings to search out a matter. That's what I'm used to hearing. <clears throat> you never know what a king is thinking. His thoughts are beyond us, like the heights of the sky or the depths of the ocean. They put their kings on a throne back then, didn't they? Four. Take the impurities out of silver, and the artist can produce a thing of beauty. Keep advisors away from the king, and his government will be known for its justice. Oh, keep evil advisors. See, I miss that word. What well, changes it when you miss a word, doesn't it? Keep e evil advisors away from the king. Yeah. Or the president, or the senator, or the congressman, right? Those are called lobbyists, by the way. <laughs> <clears throat> Six, when you stand before the king, don't try to impress him and pretend to be important. It's better be asked to take a higher position than to be told to, to give your place to someone more important. Right. Now that's always, uh, this whole thing can be hum summed up and be humble. Don't assume you're more than you are. Because you could be, you know, you automatically go to the front thinking you're important. And then... The host says, oh, your seat's back there, sorry. Then everybody's got to watch you go to the back. But if you start in the back, and then the host says, oh, your seat's up here, and me. Then everybody gets to watch, gets to watch you walk forward and, and be honored. Right? Let's see. Always be humble. Yeah. Overriding theme of Proverbs. Always be humble. <clears throat> do not boast in the presence of the king. Do not stand in the same place as great people. Right. Number eight. Don't be too quick to go to court about something you have seen. If another witness later proves you wrong, what will you do then? Right. What will you do then if somebody... Most of us just want to stay out of court, okay? It's just not a place you want to be. <clears> okay, <throat> number nine. If you and your neighbor have a difference of opinion, settle it between yourselves and do not reveal any secrets. Otherwise, everyone will learn that you can't keep a secret and you will never live down the shame. Right. Don't gossip, okay? Don't gossip. I'm reading it over here. The evil report about you will not pass away. Got that? Keep things between yourselves. Somebody else hears it and they start gossiping and you'll never live it down. Mm -hmm. I love it. An idea well expressed is like a design of gold set in silver. I, I like it over here. Like apples of gold in settings of silver as a word spoken at the proper time. Right. Knowing when to say something is almost more important as knowing, you know, what to say. Mm. 
Verse 12, a warning given by an experienced person to someone willing to listen is more valuable than gold rings or jewelry made of the finest gold. Right. We take advice. 13, a reliable messenger is refreshing to the one who sends him like cold water in the heat of harvest time. Right. Gotta remember, everything was done by messengers back then. They didn't have mail, they didn't have communications, they didn't have cell phones, they didn't have internet. You know, they would send, you know, go over there and tell this person this. And if you send an idiot, you know, it could get you in trouble. <clears throat> 14. People who promise things that they never give are like clouds and wind that bring no rain. <laughs> kind of like politicians, huh? Yeah. 15. Patient persuasion can break down the strongest resistance and can even convince rulers. Patient persuasion. Oh, I like that. Patient persuasion. What's it say over here? Through patience, a ruler may be persuaded. 16. Never eat more honey than you need to. Than you need. Too much may make you vomit. Right. Too much of a good thing. Don't visit your neighbors too often. They may get tired of you and come to hate you. Right? Don't wear out your welcome. A lot of people do this. You know? They say, would you just go away? <clears throat> Wait till they ask you. All right? 18, a false accusation is as deadly as a sword, a club, or a sharp arrow. We're finding that out, aren't we? Lots of that going on today. Somebody wants to be in power, or in power, somebody wants to lead the country into the proper direction, and a lot of evil people do not. So what do they do? They say false things against him. Right. 19, depending on, an unreli depending on an unreliable person in a crisis is like trying to chew with a loose tooth or walk with a crippled foot. All right. <clears throat> know your friends. 20. Singing to a person who is depressed is like taking off a person's clothes on a cold day or like rubbing salt on a wound. Yeah. All right. If somebody's depressed, they don't want a, a happy person. I'm going, la, 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 la. You know, they don't. They want to they punch you. Yeah. You don't want to sing to them. You just want to be quiet and listen. 21. If your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them a drink. You will make them burn in shame, and the Lord will reward you. Okay. That's me. Okay. Love your enemies. Jesus said this. Solomon said this. Okay. Love your enemies. Don't gloat when you win, because the Lord may turn their wrath away from them and onto you. Okay. Very important. And the old one you're used to, you will keep burning coals on his head, and the Lord will reward you. <clears throat> 23 gossip brings anger just as surely as the north wind brings rain I'm a big proponent of gossip I hate gossip in all its forms gossip is horrible if somebody tells you something in confidence do not tell anybody else you're not going to say, oh, I want you to help me pray for this person. No, you're not. That's not what, you know. If you tell somebody else, they're going to tell somebody else, and soon everybody's going to know about it. And this person is going to be very, very angry with you because they said something to you in confidence. <clears throat> okay? And they've made it seem normal. They meant, ooh, I love gossip. I love to hear it. You know, it's on, it's all over TV. It's all over the news. It's all over social media. And it's all gossip. Okay? It's all gossip. The Lord hates gossip. He makes that very clear. 24. Better to live on the roof than share a house with a nagging wife. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. Communication is key there. You know. 
25. Finally, hearing good news from a distant land is like a drink of cold water when you're dry and thirsty. Yeah. I'd like to hear some good news from some foreign lands, wouldn't we? <clears throat> 26. A good person who gives in to someone who is evil reminds you of a polluted spring or a poisoned well. So is a righteous person who gives away before the wicked. Yes. Don't give in. Are right, some people? No. Never give up, right? That's what Donald Trump says that. Never, ever give up. Oh. 27. Too much honey is bad for you, and so is trying to win too much praise. Right. <laughs> Unclear. 20. So what's it say over here? It's not good to eat too much honey, nor is it glory to search out one's own glory. I like that. You must always stay humble. Okay. <clears throat> stay humble. Let other people praise you. And if they don't, then it won't be. You know, don't go tooting your own horn. Nobody likes a bragger. Twenty-eight. If you cannot control your anger. You are as helpless as a city without walls open to attack. All right. All right. We're going to highlight that. You know, you learn to, it's easy to lash out, you know. I'm guilty of this. And it's like a constant prayer to. to not do that. So, that's 25. Let's see if we highlight it. And these are other people writing about Solomon's Proverbs. Mm -hmm. Keep evil advisors away from the king and his government will be known for its justice. We highlighted evil because that's like, they're called lobbyists today, okay? Evil advisors. They, we pay our representatives a a very healthy living wage, you know, more than most of us make. Okay, they make like 170,000 a year, and then along comes some lobbyist or an evil advisor who will offer them $250,000 to vote this way on this particular bill that's passing. And even though he said, well, my constituents don't want this to pass because it's bad for my economy, but this guy's giving me a quarter of a million dollars. He's giving me two years of my pay. And they're bought. Evil advisors, lobbyists. I think lobby lobbyism should be outlawed. Okay, most countries call it, you know, call it extortion, <laughs> but not us. We highlighted six and seven. When you stand before the king, don't try to impress him and pretend to be important. It is better to be asked to take a higher position than to be told to give your place to someone more important. All right. Never assume you're more important than you are. Mm -hmm. Wait to be asked to come forward. Mm -hmm. We highlighted 15 part of it. Patient persuasion can break down the strongest res resistance and even convince rulers. And over here it says, through patience a ruler may be persuaded and a gentle tongue break breaks bone. A gentle tongue breaks Boone. Yeah. Right. If you're always patient and soft spoken, sooner or later they're going to listen to you. Huh? I'm going to highlight a 17. Don't visit your neighbors too often. They may get tired of you and come to hate you. Get that? Have you ever had a neighbor like that? Just constantly knocking on your door? Or if you're in the backyard, he'll come over the fence and start just talking to you and talking to you, and he won't go away, and you feel like you're stuck there, you know. Is this guy ever going to leave? You know, oh, got to go to the bathroom. Oh, phone's ringing. You know, so just just to get away from him. Don't be that person. Hmm? Simple, don't be that person. 
18 we highlighted a false accusation is as deadly as a sword club or a sharp arrow right you don't have to go far to see the false accusations getting all the way up into the highest courts now because judges and district attorneys are corrupt and why because somebody has paid them more than the wage they're getting to do the right thing somebody's paying them more to do the wrong thing that needs to be illegal okay if you're going to be in public service you should be forced to live on the pay that you agreed to and not be able to accept more money from somebody else than you're making as your salary okay if you don't want it if you don't want to be in public service don't be a public service. Go make your money somewhere else. Okay? Otherwise, this happens. You know, what happens when the people putting out false accusations are the judges and the attorneys and our elected officials? Okay? And it's happening. I highlighted 21. This is important. If your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them a drink. You will make them burn with shame, and the Lord will reward you. Keep burning coals on their heads. <clears throat> right. Jesus talked about this too. Thousands of years later. And we highlighted 23. Gossip brings anger just as surely as the north wind brings rain. Gossip always makes somebody angry. Whoever you're gossiping about, Sooner or later, it's going to trace back to you. Okay. We highlighted 26. A good person who gives in to someone who is evil reminds you of a polluted spring or a poisoned well. You know, I mean, everything's happening in politics right now, so you just have to look into politics and you can find, you know, a good person who's given in to the other side. You know? Almost everybody in Congress, somebody, they have people that will go out and search for dirt on them, something they did in their past that <clears throat> they don't want to, they don't want brought forward. Some of them even have organizations that will, that will coax them into doing something wrong or some committing some sin or something and then they'll tape it or, and they'll have proof of it. And then they'll use that to blackmail this person to get whatever they want. You know, you know, a good person who did something bad, maybe even in his youth, that doesn't want people doesn't want it to get out. You know, when you confess your sins and the truth shall set you free, they don't believe that. They just don't want to. They don't want to be the one. You know, that's ridiculed. So they do what other people say. You know, that's a good person giving into someone who's evil. Pollutes everything. Pollutes the spring, poisons the well. Okay? And it's all poison. Okay. Highlighted 27. Too much honey is bad for you. And so is trying to win too much praise. Okay? You go along like this, you know. Look at me. And bad for you. Be humble. Always be humble. And 28, if you cannot control your anger, you're as helpless as a city without walls open to attack. Right. That's, that's a big one there. You know? How do you control your anger? You get to pray about it. You need to be constantly vigilant. You know, to think before you act and think before you speak. And, you know, it's not easy. But it can't be done. So that's today. That's Proverbs 25 for February 25th. Oh, we'll jump back over here. Stay tuned later today for we're still in numbers. Or I'm not sure what they're doing now. They were just they took all the the Levites and Aaron's sons and you know. 8,500 of the 22,000 Levites and 
gave them all jobs for the tabernacle and the tents, and somebody's in charge of the poles, and somebody's in charge of the tables, and somebody's in charge of the fabric, and somebody's in charge of the roof. And, you know, so it's at one point because they're still out in the desert. Okay, they haven't gone into the promised land yet, and someday, and there's like a million people there, and someday they're gonna. This is all gonna need moved. So, so God said the Levites are mine. They are mine. Okay. I no longer want the firstborn of every, of all of your cattle, of all of your people, because now the Levites are mine, and he claimed them as his own. So, now who knows where they are today, but we're continuing with that, so stay tuned later on for that. Until then, have a good Sunday. Go to church and give somebody a hug. Don't gossip. Okay, let that end with you. Always be humble. All right, sit in the back. Until next time, see you later.